amplifier so we can start making an inf like once we get the survey data we're going to make an infographic and then take the survey data to create like an online resource for people but in terms of what we'll probably need from you guys we'll, all of us in our group are going to res like respectively we're going to each email like our school administration to like let them know about the survey that we're going to be sending out in terms of because we don't want to like step on their toes i guess and like to send it out and have like all of these negative responses and like not have them like know about it but also in terms of what we could use from you guys is we're gonna create like a shorter link and like because for some of you like some of you go to the same school so like you won't have to like directly email people but like once we get like a yes from our school administrators we're gonna ask you guys to like share the survey with people in your grade that way we can get like a lot of responses because the more responses the more accurate and like also the more interesting it is for all of us so that's what we that's what we accomplished today Cool. Any questions for freedom of expression? Okay. Um, thank you. It sounds really exciting. And we were saying in that group, freedom of expression is is incre is so important during this time as we figure out the the path ahead. So we'll be eager to hear what you find. Uh, immigration. So today we actually like finalized our project. So we'll be making like a film to which is exploring the relationship like between coronavirus and immigration so how coronavirus has changed the process like people's experiences and stuff and we like today today we just kind of found organizations like got articles for our research and like talked to Felipe and stuff to um just to hear what he thought about our project and for him to give his input and give us kind of like more sources and stuff mm -hmm. and our hope I guess going into the future is to also be able to interview some of the representatives from these organizations and include that footage into our documentary. Um, and also maybe after we do more research to come up with some sort of like advocacy plan in terms of what we believe needs to change about the system uh, and what we think, you know, the next steps can be in order to improving how the system works under a crisis like this. Sounds very exciting. Any questions for immigration? Excited to see it. Um, uh, Trauma-informed prosecution. Um, okay, so we kind of finalized, like we've been going back and forth with ideas and we finalized that we're going to be creating a website that um, works, it's gonna have a bunch of different pages. So we're gonna have like our mission statement about prosecution informed, but uh, oh my God, trauma-informed prosecution. And then basically it's, we want to make a resource for people uh, like, but of a high diversity. So we, for students, um, prosecutors, adults, really anyone who kind of wants to learn about trauma informed prosecution. And we, today we just kind of created a guideline within the website. We're going to have a Google side. So that's like a lesson plan. Um, and I don't know, really you want to add on to anything or. Or we were thinking also about making um, a journalistic aspect to it in terms of interviewing um, formerly incarcerated people um, and prosecutors, a bunch of people that we met at the roundtable discussion we're thinking about interviewing, um, just to talk about their experience with trauma in the system. And then that way we can like give them a platform about what work they've already been doing. Um, we're thinking about creating an important news page for people to see all like the recent policy proposals um, about trauma-informed prosecution and the work done by the IIP, which is the Institution for Innovation and Prosecution, and the DA office to promote trauma-informed prosecution, and then thinking about organizations that people can donate money to for research. So like the Joyful Heart Foundation is like trying to promote um, a new rape kit for New York City and also Planned Parenthood. So right now we're just thinking about people to get into contact with um, in terms of interviews. Um, and our goal for like the presentation is not necessarily to have like a fully fleshed out website, but to have like kind of basically like the we think like the most important elements of it. And then we're planning to continue with it and add on and make it um, like improve it even after the presentation, but that's just our goal for now. Well, and, I'm, and I'm glad you raised that. I'll just make a general comment for everyone. Um, this is work in process. You know, we know that it will be work in process. So, 
you should see the presentations as like you do want to have something that you're sharing, but it can also be a great opportunity for feedback. So for example, with, with Anna and Rhea and their group's website to be able to sort of share it and say, you know, have people, especially since we may be online, you know, what parts do you want to see more of? Like what resources do you want to add? We'll go over this more next time when we're together and you're working concretely on your presentation, but thinking about how to make it interactive and, you know, we're going to have lots of great people there who you may want to be drawing wisdom from. Uh, thank you for that. Any questions for trauma-informed prosecution? Okay, school to prison pipeline. All right, uh, so today what we, uh, with me and my team did is we outlined um, what we're gonna do for our uh, presentation. So basically we're gonna focus on statistical evidence and stuff. And today we finalize uh, what we are proposing, which is more uh, social workers and mentors in schools and let involve less uh, po uh, police and law enforcement because we believe that using law enforcement shouldn't be a tool for students because statistically students are res aren't responding properly. And I think students, schools should focus like more on mental health and stuff and how to be a, a support for students and implement more resources and opportunities for students to use between the hours of, between like afternoon and evening, which are like times that are crimes committed. How can we prevent that? And um, also uh, social workers being more of an outlet to students and building a much uh, broader like bond and trust. Uh, that's what we, uh, that's what we did. And we also thought about it in kind of a political sense, like how are we going to get people on board? So we thought about presenting it as a generational problem to whoever's in the room. Cause it's like, like as you know, like kids as youth, like we're all gonna be voting soon or already voting. So to kind of get behind these issues that so many young people support is gonna be really powerful for these elected officials and people running for office. And then also we were thinking about um, divesting from NYPD, investing in kind of DOE and Department of Social Services. But the only challenge with that is that it seems like social workers immediately, we thought about this as a challenge, would be immediately more expensive than police officers. Mm -hmm. So we would really have to get the point across that like increased police presence causes increased crime which causes like a larger amount of inmates and prison overcrowding which ends up cause, costing the city so much more money in the long run social workers are more expensive short term but they prevent crime which prevents prison overcrowding so that leads to like less money being spent in the long term so we really need to kind of like get the point across that like if we spend more money now we'll end up saving the city money because like cost of programs is such a big issue that like you know it's really hard to kind of get behind all these big policies because there's a big price tag on them but if we say like our price tag is eventually going to save the city money then we feel like a lot of people will get behind it. Yeah. Asher it's so great you pointed that out and that's just again another point to the pres other presentations. Many of yours don't have financial implications but if they do what Asher just narrated is a great example of sometimes things do have an upfront cost but make that correlation of how it can save uh, money. Again, you don't need to just do it in economic terms. Uh, there's other forms of justice that are being realized, but it's really valuable if you can also make the case in, in dollars and cents. And also that far-sighted thing that we're creating generational change. It's in our name, Next Generation Politics. So it's great that many of you are being far-sighted. It won't happen overnight, but you're planting seeds that need to uh, be harvested. Any questions for School to Prison Pipeline? Great. And our last group, voting rights and voter engagement. Yeah, so we kind of like shifted our focus a little. Originally, we were going to talk about like changing the voting age for state and local elections um, to 16. But then we thought like in the wake of the like whole COVID-19 um, pandemic, we would shift to something that's more timely um, and like has like immediate repercussions. So we were thinking, um, of doing like online voter registration where it's not like currently we have a system where like if you have a DMV number you can register to vote online but not many there was a statistic that like not many people do have a DMV license in New York especially in New York City so like that's even more relevant because people don't really drive um so just thinking about like in terms of moving forward like facing future pandemics as well as just like how it could benefit like the general public having systems in place to register to vote online so like i don't know like not just for like 
now because like we can't go outside but in the future like getting people who won't like take all the extra steps to like print the form like nail it get everything done um just having like a linear system and a way of explaining that and showing like especially we want to start like um instagram outreach to like talk to students and get them more involved so they do like show up to our like final presentation to show that's like an issue students really care about um and that like it's affecting the next generation and it's not just right now but like long term fantastic and i love how your group and many of the groups are really capitalizing on this covid moment to like make it current and cutting edge and to push for things that are needed now and for the future any questions for voting rights and voter engagement Great. It is so fantastic to hear the progress that you're making. Um, we are going to come together next, I think it's three weeks from now, uh, where we'll be focusing on um, the presentations. So I know many of you have next steps that you'll be taking over the coming weeks you know, as your time allows. Uh, we also want to encourage you to take time for yourself and self-care and also other care you know, in your families and extended circles. And please feel free to reach out to us, to any of your fellow fellows in any way that we can support you um, on many axes um, uh, across, during this time. And we wanted to close out, some of you have been doing great work you know, in this context uh, civically, and um, Asher has shared something that he's created uh, that, that we want him to share uh, with all of you so you can know about it and support Asher. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, I made a website that's handling the COVID crisis. It's called donateyourbailout.org. And basically the government just passed this like trillion dollar stimulus package. And a big like hallmark of it is these stimulus checks that a lot of families are going to receive. So the point of this website is it provides six like thoroughly vetted, highly ranked organizations that are combating this crisis. And you can go on the website and if a person qualifies for this check, they can donate some of it, they can donate all of it. If a person, you know, kind of like makes more than the maximum annual household income to qualify, they can go and they can go donate an equivalent amount. And it's like providing information on the website about each organization, directly what's your money going to do. And like very, it's very transparent about like how much money each organization spends, how much actually goes to programs versus administrative costs. And it's just a really good transparent way of like increasing donations to, you know, combat COVID-19. Thank you. Any questions for Asher? Such a nice thing you did. But thank you for yeah. that. Thank wow. you. It's really amazing. And also I know we had a group at the beginning of the session talking about inequality and privilege and you know how we can really think about redistributing resources, you know, during this time and on the other side of it. So thanks for creating uh, you know, an instrument to, to support that in, in, a, in a concrete way. Thank you for letting me share. <laughs> Absolutely. Any parting thoughts or comments that anyone wants to share with the group? Um, can I say something? Of course, Mike. Um, let, me, let me just say that uh, the fact that everybody's just here doing this is just, uh, it's, it's an uplifting thing. And honestly, it's, it makes me smile that everybody's at least at least I got to see everybody's face at some point. I, this is ironic because my face isn't being shown. I know, we're not seeing yours. <laughs> um, but that's okay. Um, my, my camera is too foggy, so I have to fix that. Um, but point, point, of, no, point being, you know, these next three weeks are going to be very different, very unpredictable, and I don't know what the, is going to come out of this. Uh, Cuomo just a couple hours ago said that uh, we are virtually at the peak at this moment, but we'll see what the next uh, couple of days looks like. Um, but I just want, I just want to like reemphasize that I hope that everybody just, uh, you know, takes care of themselves during this time, because I know how hectic all this uh, thing can be. I, I can attest to that. Um, I feel like online learning has doubled the workload instead of uh, easing things up, but hopefully we can, you know, get past this. And I know for all the seniors out there, this is a very, you know, suckish time. I don't think suckish is a word, but that's okay. I think that's the technical term right now. Yes. Yeah, that's, that, it just sucks that uh, this is happening during our senior year with when there were supposed to be a bunch of other things going on. But oh well, hopefully this doesn't last longer than it should be. Thank you for those words, Mark. And 
you know, we, we want to think about some sort of a civic celebration that we can have. It's obviously not going to substitute for prom and, and graduation and some of the things that are being compromised, but we welcome any ideas anyone wants to share for ways that we can sort of celebrate and, you know, elevate uh, uh, the work that, that you're doing collectively. Any other last thoughts to share? Terrific. Well, thank you, everyone. Echoing what Mark said, it's great to have you here. Take good, good care of yourselves. We will be thinking about you, and we look forward to being back together on April 26th um, and being in touch with fingers before that. Thank and good you. wishes for the holidays that are coming as well for everyone who celebrates. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.